Hello family, we thank God for today. He's a good God, he's a gracious Father. Today, as we continue to lift up prayer for the nation of Israel, I want my prayer focus to be that the people would come to repentance where that is required by God. But before I pray, I want to make references to a couple of scriptures. The first one is in Acts chapter 3 verse 19. It says, Repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. Matthew 4 17 says, From that time Jesus began to preach saying, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, today we're reminded, Father God, that repentance has a significant role to play in the life of anyone who wants to have a closer walk with you, in the life of anyone who wants to be considered holy and righteous in your sight. And Lord, yesterday, even as I prayed, Father God, that many, O oh God, who do not know you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior, will come to the saving knowledge of your love, of your grace, of your mercy, of your compassion, of the free gifts of salvation, that you have given to all men. Lord, they will not receive the free gift of salvation unless they are convicted of sin. Unless, O oh God, every person is convicted that they are born a sinner and that they in need of a saviour. And so, Lord, today, knowing that God, the acts and the things that we consider sinful, even there are times when people who are not believers recognize that certain acts is not inherently known or considered to be right from a moral standpoint and from an ethical standpoint. And so when your word tells us, O oh God, that we are a people who are born in sin, we can look at our own lives as individuals and know for a certainty that indeed we're not perfect. There are times when we act in ways that we later look back on them and we know that we did not act rightly. And it is individuals who make up a nation. And therefore, God, when you look upon a nation and you're determining whether that nation is wholly righteous or not, it is the actions of those group of individuals that determines whether you consider a nation righteous or not. And I'm reminded of your word that says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And so today, Father God, you know the acts of God Almighty that have been carried out by individuals in the nation of Israel that have been carried out, Father God Almighty, by Israel itself. Even, O oh God, in recent years and over the years since its inception, Lord. And you know the things that, O oh God Almighty, has been done that you consider to be sinful. You know those sinful deeds, Father God, for which repentance has been sought. And you know those sinful deeds for which repentance has never been sought from you, O oh God. You are the only one. Who forgives sins. So your word says that when we confess our sin, that you are faithful and you are just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so God, today, I stand in the gap and join in with brothers and sisters listening to this podcast as we lift up the nation of Israel and its people to you to say that, Lord, be merciful to the people and the nation of Israel. And forgive them, Father God, for every sin they've committed against you. For every unconfessed sin, my Savior and my God. I pray that, Lord, you will show them mercy. 
and that, Lord, your mercy will triumph over judgment concerning the people of Israel. That, Lord God Almighty, where, Father, they themselves as a nation and as individuals need to seek your face in repentance, I am praying in the name of Jesus that you will bring that conviction upon them, upon their leaders, Father God, upon particularly even religious leaders in the land who will cry out to you to show them mercy, who will cry out to you to forgive, O oh God, the iniquities in the name of Jesus, so that God Almighty, it will please you to hear their cry, and it will please you, Father God Almighty, to honor your word that says, when we confess our sins. So I pray that, Lord God, across the nation, even in individual families and homes, Lord God, where people have wronged one another, where sins have been carried out against one another, let there be a stirring and a move of your Holy Spirit in the hearts of people that they will begin to confess their sins one to another, which is another thing your word tells us we are to do. That as they confess their sins one to another, they will, O oh God Almighty, forgive one another for their trespasses. And so that, Lord, when they cry out to you, you too will forgive their trespasses. For that is what Jesus, you taught us even through the prayer that you taught the disciples. That the only way we can guarantee that we will receive forgiveness of our sins from Jehovah God Almighty, our Father, is when we forgive those who have sinned or trespassed against us. So I am asking in the name of Jesus that in, in, in within families, communities, Father, people will begin to forgive one another so that God in return, they will receive your forgiveness. And as they receive your forgiveness, you will bring about cleansing, cleansing of individuals, cleansing Father God Almighty of the people of the nation and cleansing within the nation itself. That righteousness, Lord, will be exalted in the land. For we know that God Almighty in the nation of Israel now, it is not only people of God Almighty that are, are, are traditionally Jewish people who are living within the land. But there are many people from different parts of the world, even living in that nation, who do not acknowledge you, Jehovah God, as God. Who do not even have any religious affiliation whatsoever. And yet when they act, O oh God Almighty, and when they sin, Father God Almighty, because they dwell in the land, their deeds impacts the land both from a physical standpoint and from a spiritual standpoint. So Jesus, today we pray that let it please you in your mercy to pour out your blood, your cleansing blood, to cleanse the lives of individuals, O oh God, in the nation of Israel and to cleanse the land itself so that God they will be receive your mercy and that because of that Lord every good and perfect will of yours concerning the people of Israel and the nation itself will become a living reality we give you glory we give you praise because we have asked these things in no other name then in the name of Jesus, we know that you have heard us and you will do as we have asked. According to your loving kindness, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're now going to go over our memory verse. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And take every thought captive to obey Christ. We're personalizing it by saying, I destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And I take every thought captive to obey Christ. The Lord bless you. And I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen.